So you want to learn to paint in watercolour? Well let's see if we can help you. I'm sure I can. I'm going to show you now examples of ways of painting in watercolour, methods and techniques, and also a lot of step-by-steps and uh, some demonstrations done all over the world and here at Le Paradou. I'm sure that by the time I've done all of these you'll have a very firm foundation in being able to make a start. Um, it. An easel is very comfortable because you have a small stool and can just rest an easel on your lap or you can use an ordinary wooden easel but it's more vertical. With the easel you're able to uh, change the angle more. Do the colours now. It may be an idea for you to pause your DVD player here so that you can actually write down these colours and look at them more slowly. And this is my personal wallet of brushes and a couple of little sea sponges. When this is dry, it'll be as tight as a drum. And um, when you paint onto it, even if it cockles slightly, it will then stretch out again. Earlier I talked about painting some of the points in detail, like the figures and the windows and some details in this painting, and then painting the wet into wet afterwards. This technique is used in both of these paintings, where I paint some of the details and then loosely around it. The same here. The figures are painted. This is almost any subject matter. It's important to know when to stop with watercolour, not to keep fiddling with it. Mind you, if you do lose a watercolour, it's possible to come back and overwork with pastel to give a, a, a life back again to your watercolour. Let's look at the different way I've approached various subjects by a few simple step-by-steps. Here we can see how I've done the sky first and the background to the distance and gradually worked the glazes up and the washes up until I get my details at the very end. We come to the foreground and work in the wet into wet foreground, as I'm afraid, but still I enjoyed it very much. You've seen me using my rapid watercolour techniques, but here's the methods used more traditionally of blocking and gradually building up a watercolour, and how I've drawn and then built up the uh, painting of the flowers section by section, gradually building up each part and blending and glazing and overworking them until I have a final, large, very detailed painting. Masking fluids are a very important and useful medium. Here you can see the edges of the cliffs, the waves and the sea to colour for me. I love working in this very loose way. It's very lively and as I say it's very hard to achieve anything like this with any other medium than acrylic ink or watercolour. Here again we have a very atmospheric painting of two little dinghies in Wales, worked up with a very loose wet and wet technique. This next painting will show several techniques. We start off with the China Graph pencil, straight onto the white paper, in this case a rough paper. This is a scene in Lincolnshire with a wonderful chance to use a one-point perspective. It's a snow scene and when I finish doing the drawing I continue into the watercolour and then while it's still wet add some ordinary sea salt, some good rough old sea salt and you see the textual effect it makes. We can get various textures by using sea salt or putting even plastic bags or tissue over the top. And then I've lifted out some of the directional marks along the road into the snow with a dry brush. I'm working on a hundred pound Arches Hot Press, a smooth surface paper, but some of the paintings you saw earlier of snow scenes were on the rough because I wanted that texture, in this case I don't. Want them nice and bright and clean, so I don't know why that bit of blue came from, but you can see these days is now coming back. My spray, and we let it spread. flat brushes because I want a bit more dry brush work going on as I just did there a little bit. And this is where the right shape brush comes in handy because you know you don't want to be using a round brush for a square hole do you? It's so comfortable like that. The legs extend out and all I want to do is fit my ball up and spot it on top and it's easy. So there we go. Just the two brushes I'll have needed to use the fine one because I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on it. And we finish up with.
Uh, and, and final points just to bring the eye into focus and there's our finished painting. Not only lively and loose but the point is great fun to do and I think that shows in a That'll do. The wind is very strong now and the tide coming in quickly so I'm having to work very very quickly and it's also why I've had to dub this part over because you can't hear a word with the wind blowing in the microphone. Well I think I'm almost there. It's nice and lively, it's bright, it's used all the three techniques of the light watercolour showing through, the uh, stronger inks at the bottom of the past is just gently glazing over the top and picking out the brighter colours. Details and loose ends. Don't finish this painting off because now the paint is dry, so any paint I'm putting on is going to be dark. So just a little bit, just a little tickle here and there. Don't ever do it. As I say, you'll lose your painting if you do. You'll lose this beautiful freedom that we have, this looseness of style. My finger there, just to blend that back. And I think that painting, for what I wanted, is, is there. I don't think I need to do much more with this. Well, how do we go about drawing such a complicated thing? Um, I think one of the easiest ways to explain this is to look at some of the demonstrations I've already done, um, showing using the scale of a uh, frame a cardboard frame like this where I've used the elastic bands and divided the frame into quarters and eighths and sixteenths. I've done the same with the edge of the paper and we can use elastic bands across it as well so that you can gauge the angles of things. This one I've already set up to the bird here and how he's a quick shot of what it looks like through it. First of all we have to set up a composition and I've done that so just starting to dry off a bit so I can it won't spread as far. See now the paint is hard edged and the darks remain there and don't blend in unless I use some clean water next to them. Which I'll do just here because they're a little bit strong this time. So I'll just soften those back a bit. Right, we'll take away this bit of masking fluid just here so that you can get an idea of uh, what it's like <coughs> and why we use masking fluid again. Use my handkerchief just to grip the masking fluid a bit more. I do find a cloth tends to lift more easily than a mucky finger. Now make sure that the paint is absolutely dry before you do this. The last thing you want is to smudge that. There we go, we'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back again. 